شکرے خدا میں رضوی ہو الحمدللہ تم الحمدللہ for the last few nights I have been attempting to discuss the fazilat and the virtues and the maqam of the Ahlul Bayt and the beloved companions of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ridwanullah ta'ala alayhi ajma'in and in doing so The objective is to take us towards the events that led to the tragedy and the heart-wrenching event on the plains of Karbala. Last night, I spoke about the maqam and the fazilat of Hasnain Kaliman radiallahu ta'ala anhumah and the grand station of excellence which Almighty Allah bestowed upon them. I further explained how the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam showed love and affection towards them and how these two delicate flowers, these two beautiful roses from the gardens of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were nurtured by Sayyidatuna Fatima al-Zahra radiallahu ta'ala anha and Sayyidatuna Mawla Ali radiallahu anha and most of all that they were beautifully molded with all the best of characteristics and the best of traits by the most noble and the most exalted in Allah's creation Sayyiduna Mawlana Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam We are all well aware and we know well the beautiful character and the sabr of the mother of Hasnain Karimain Sayyidatuna Fatima Zahra radiallahu ta'ala anha and we know well about the bravery and the courage of Mawla Ali radiallahu ta'ala anha Before I go any further today let me share with you a bit about the mother of Hasnain Karimain radiallahu anhuma We've talked about the Ahlul Bayt we've talked about the companions of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I explained to you the maqam and the fadilat and the virtues of Hasnain Karimain radiallahu anhuma yesterday. But today, on this journey, while trying to understand the events that led to the Battle of Karbala and the actual Battle of Karbala, let us try and discuss the virtues of the virtuous and the pure and the Mubarak daughter of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the wife of Mawla Ali, karramallahu wa akhu al-kareem, and the mother of Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Hassan, and Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. Hazrat Sayyidina Shaykh Hafiz ibn Abu Nu'aym Ahmad bin Abdullah Asfahani radiallahu anhu, says regarding Sayyidatuna Fatima al-Zahra radiallahu anha. He says something very beautiful. He says, Hazrat Sayyidina Shaykh Hafiz Abu Nu'aym radiallahu anha. What does he say? He says that Hazrat Sayyidatuna Fatima al-Zahra radiallahu anha is regarded amongst the most pious and sincere worshippers amongst the women. She is the most beloved daughter of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah. Hazrat Sayyidina Shaykh, Hafiz Abu Nu'aym radiallahu an, Imam Abu Nu'aym radiallahu an, is saying that Hazrat Sayyidatuna Fatima Zahra radiallahu an, is regarded amongst the most pious and sincere worshippers amongst the women. She is the beloved daughter of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Just this, that she is the beloved daughter of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is sufficient for us to understand the virtue and the maqam and the fazilat of Sayyidatuna Fatima Zahra radiallahu ta'ala anha. And indeed, Sayyidatuna Fatima Zahra radiallahu anha is Zahina, Abida, Tahira, Fatima. 
She is that beloved daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who Nabi Karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam loved so dearly. And we all know well that after Nabi Karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed from this physical world, apparently, when Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam left this in a zahiri manner, he left the zahiri dunya. Sayyidatuna Fatima Zahra radiallahu anha was the first to leave the dunya and meet with the beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the hereafter. She was that Mubarak personality, the mother of Imam Hassan and Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhumah. She was that Mubarak personality who lived in the world, yet she divorced herself from the pomp and the splendor of this dunya. She was that person who understood very well the vices and the dangers of this world. And hence she lived in the world, yet she was totally divorced from the dunya. She divorced herself from the pomp and the splendor of this world. And Hadrat Sayyidatuna Fatima Zahra radiallahu anha, the beloved daughter of the, of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa and the wife of the Lion of Allah, Mawla Ali radiallahu an, the mother of Hasnain Karimain radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, is that Mubarak personality that everybody praises one another. Everybody speaks about Bibi Fatima Zahra radiallahu anha. But listen to what the husband of Fatima Zahra radiallahu anha says. Hadrat Sayyiduna Mawla Ali Amir Mu'mineen radiallahu ta'ala and listen to what he says about his beloved wife and the beloved daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the beloved mother of Hasnain Karimai radiallahu ta'ala anhumah. It is reported that Hazrat Sayyidina Ibn Abad radiallahu ta'ala an states that Amir al-Mu'mineen Hazrat Sayyidina Ali radiallahu an once said to me, O oh, Ibn Abad, should I not inform you about Fatima and I? Subhanallah. Hazrat Mawla Ali radiallahu is saying to him, should I not inform you? He says that Mawla Ali said to me once that should I not inform you about Fatima and I? He says then without waiting for any response, Hadrat Ali radiallahu anh, didn't wait for me to say yes or no. He said, should I not inform you about Fatima and I? And then without waiting for a response, Hadrat Ali radiallahu anh, said from amongst the Ahlul Bayt, the most honored and respected by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was, was my wife Fatima. Subhanallah. Mawla Ali radiallahu anhu is saying from amongst the Ahlul Bayt, the most honored and respected by the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was my wife, who Sayyidatuna Fatima Zahra radiallahu anhu. And then Mawla Ali radiallahu ta'ala an speaks about Sayyidatuna Fatima Zahra radiallahu anhu. And I want my mothers and my sisters and our daughters to listen to this narration very carefully. And do not listen to this narration just with your ears, but listen with your hearts. Listen to what Hadrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala an is saying about his wife. Look at what he's saying about Sayyidatuna Fatima Zahra radiallahu anha. He's first saying that from amongst the Ahlul Bayt, the most honored and respected by the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was my wife. In other words, Hazrat Sayyidatuna Fatima Zahra radiallahu And then he says, that she would run the mill by herself. She would run the mill by herself until she had blisters in her hands. Allah Akbar. Who is this? This is the daughter of Imam al Anbiya. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is the daughter of the greatest in Allah's creation. But she would run the mill by herself until she had blisters in her Mubarak hands. And Mawla Ali radiallahu says that she would personally fill and carry water in the leathern water pouch in the mashkiza. She would personally go and fill the water and she would carry it to the extent that she had a mark on her blessed body, on her chest Mubarak because of carrying that water, slinging it over her shoulder. Who are we talking about here? We are talking about the Mubarak daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We are talking about the wife of Mawla Ali radiallahu anhu. 
we are talking about the mother of Hasnain Karimain radiallahu anhuma. Bear in mind that Mawla Ali radiallahu anh did not dictate the terms to her. He would not have forced her to do this. But this was her love for her family. This was the love for her family. This was her humility. This was her simplicity. That she would run the mill by herself as per her husband. Mawla Ali radiallahu anh is telling us. She would run the mill by herself until she had blisters in her hands. And she would fill and carry the water in a leathern pouch to the extent that she had a mark on her blessed body. He said she would also clean the house by herself. She would also clean the house by herself. Today our homes, how many of our homes have maids and servants? But still, it is not enough. So many of our homes have everything. We have all the luxuries, we have all the comforts. But still there are complaints. Our mothers and sisters need to learn how important it is to make shukr in the court of Almighty Allah. Learn from Sayyidatuna Fatima Zahra radiallahu anha, the daughter of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa Mawla Ali is saying that she would also clean the house by herself due to which her clothes would become soiled and dusty. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. She would clean the house by herself he says due to which her clothes would become dusty, it would become soiled. And he said she would even personally light the fire under the pots, in other words for cooking. She would bend down and light the fire under the pots. They did not have electricity in those days. They did not have the hobs. They did not have the best of stoves. They did not have the gas lighters. They gathered wood. They lit fires. They cooked, they made effort. And all of this Sayyidatuna Fatima Zahra radiallahu anha used to do. Are we learning something from this? Are we learning something from these words of Mawla Ali radiallahu anha where he is telling us what his wife Bibi Fatima used to do radiallahu anha and I'm repeating she would clean the house by herself and her clothes would become dusty and soiled. And she would also personally light the fire and the pots, in other words, to cook. And he says, due to which her clothes would become stained because of being near the fire, the smoke and the smoke. He says at times due to having to do all the household chores by herself, she would have to bear immense hardship. In other words, she went through immense difficulty, but she did it. She did it for the pleasure of her family and she did it to comfort her family. And she did this because of her humility. Who is this? This is that Mubarak woman. This is that Mubarak woman and noble woman who is the daughter of the king of this entire dunya appointed from the court of Almighty Allah. She is the daughter of Imam al Anbiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She is the daughter of that beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam behind whom all the Anbiya Ikram stood in Salah on the night of Mi'raj. She is the mother of Hasnain Karibain radiallahu anhuma who are those two beautiful roses of the Mubarak Garden that are remembered and will be remembered till the day of Qiyamah. She is the wife of Fatih Khaybar Mawla Ali radiallahu anhu uprooted the entire door of the fort of Khaybar by himself. But look at her way of life. Look at her sadgi. Look at her humility. And this is why that Imam Hassan and Imam Hussain radiallahu anhuma were so beautifully nurtured and trained because they were nurtured in the house of Bibi Fatima Zahra radiallahu anha. They were nurtured in the lap of Sayyidatuna Fatima Zahra radiallahu anha. They learned humility from their mother and their father. They learned bravery and courage from Mawla Ali. And they learned all the beautiful characteristics and traits from the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa This is that Fatima Zahra radiallahu ta'ala anha. Who would spend her entire nights in the ibadat of Allah. She spends her entire day caring for her family and doing her household chores. And at night 
She is on the musalla, standing in the court of Allah, and then goes into sajda and making dua that create for me such a night in which Fatima can complete one sajda. Create for me such a night in which Fatima can complete a sajda. Mean make one such sajda that her heart is completely pleased. Create for her such a night. This is that Fatima Zahra radiAllahu taala anha. This is why you're in my Imam. Mujaddid le dino millat. Parwana isha mili salat. Asha Imam Muhammad Raza Khan. Fazle Barelvi radiAllahu taala an. So beautifully says. He says Sayyida. Zahira, Tayyiba, Tahira. Sayyida, Zahira, Tayyiba, Tahira. Jaan Ahmad ki rahat pe laakko salam. Sayyida, Zahira, Tayyiba, Tahira. Jaan Ahmad ki rahat pe laakko salam. The pure princess, the radiant bud, the chaste, the epitome of ablution. The pure princess, the radiant bud, the chest, the epitome of ablution upon the tranquility of the heart of Nabi Ahmad. Millions of salutations. The pure princess, princess, the radiant bud, the chest, the epitome of ablution upon the tranquility of the heart of Ahmad. Millions of salutations. Sayyida, Zahira, Tayyiba, Tahira, Jaan Ahmad, Kirahat, Pilako Salam. This is why, when we present our pleas in the court of Sayyidina Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we should also use the wasila and the wasta of this pure and blessed woman, Sayyidatuna Fatima Zahra radiallahu ta'ala anha. So, this is why. When we present our pleas in the court of Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we should also use the wasila and the wasta of Sayyidatuna Fatima Zahra radiallahu anha. We should always try to use her wasta because she is beloved to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And when you go into the court of the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the wasta and the wasila of Sayyidatuna Fatima Zahra radiallahu anha, and indeed, the Nazir Karam of the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will be upon us. And when that happens, then we will be accepted. And what we ask will be accepted in the court of Almighty Allah. This has been the way of the Mashaykh. And this is why Murshid al-Kareem, Huzur Sayyidi, Wasanadi, Sarkari Taj Sharia, radiallahu an, while yearning and wishing to be lost and drowned in the love of Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Madinah Al-Munawwara, he says, Ya Rasulullah, Bahre Fatima. Ya Rasulullah, Bahre Fatima, Apne Akhtar ko Madine me guma. Ya Rasulullah, Bahre Fatima, Apne Akhtar ko Madine me guma. Ya Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, by Sayyidatuna Fatima's intercession. Ya Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, by Sayyidatuna Fatima's intercession. In Madina, allow your Akhtar to be drowned in absorption. Allahu Akbar. This is what the pious have taught us because of the greatness and the maqam of Hazrat Fatima the Zahra radiallahu ta'ala anha. Now this is the maqam of the mother of Hasnain Kalimain radiallahu anha. This is the grandness of the daughter of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the humility of the wife of Mawla Ali radiallahu ta'ala anha. Think about this for a moment again, especially my mothers and my sisters. Now coming back to the discussion on the nurturing of Hasnain Kalimain radiallahu ta'ala anha. You have understood and I have understood now who their mother is and how her humility was. We know who their father was and is and how brave and courageous he was. And we know that they are the grandchildren of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now coming back after knowing this and understanding that we are talking about their nurturing. Because we are trying to understand that how these two great personalities did what they did. And how did Imam Hussain radiallahu anhu, how was he trained and nurtured to be facing that hardship and difficulty on the plains of Karbala? It is because he was nurtured by Fatima Zahra radiallahu ta'ala anha. Because he was nurtured by Mawla Ali radiallahu ta'ala anha. And because he was nurtured by the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam above all. So coming back to the discussion. Coming back to the discussion on the nurturing of Hasnain Karimain radiallahu ta'ala anha. We must also understand when the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nurtured Hasnain Karimain radiallahu anhumah, they were nurtured from a very young age. From a very young age, Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Bibi Fatima Zahra and Imam 
And Mawla Ali radiallahu an, from a very young age, they were nurtured. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa when he nurtured them, they were nurtured from this very young age, for what? To be patient, for sabr, to persevere even in the face of adversity. They were trained for this. They were taught what is sabr. They were taught patience because they saw their homes. They saw the patience of their mother. They saw the patience of their father. They saw the patience and the unique sabr of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They learned this from the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they learned the sabr and patience from the Mubarak home of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Our beloved Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lived a life of humility. We all know that. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lived a life of humility and a life full of patience. And he trained. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam trained and nurtured. Hasnain Karimain radiallahu anhumah for the same. This is what he trained and nurtured them for. He taught them patience. And there was none who could teach it better than the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ustaz Zaman Shahanshah Sukhan Hadrat Allama Maulana Hassan Raza Radiallahu An From whose Ayna Qayamat I am extracting most of the narrations that I am presenting to you And whose Urs Mubarak Just passed Just passed during the day The Urs Mubarak Of this Mubarak personality Hazrat Hassan Raza Radiallahu Just passed today In the day that passed this Mubarak personality, who is the younger brother of Allah, Hadrat Adimul Barakat radiallahu an, says that Almighty Allah made our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam the noblest and the most eminent amongst the creation. Subhanallah. Almighty Allah made our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what does he say? The most, the, the, the noblest and the most eminent amongst the entire creation. And Almighty Allah garbed Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam in the robes of magnific magnificence. He says this is why the difficulties which he sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam had to bear in this world and the hardships which he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had to endure cannot be endured by anybody else. Nobody else will be able to withstand and endure that difficulty and those hardships that the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went through. Ustaz Zaman radiallahu anh did say something very beautifully. He says Allah, Allah. He says Allah, Allah. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is so beloved to Almighty Allah. The beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is so beloved to Almighty Allah. That Almighty Allah says, kalama khalaqtu dunya. He says that Almighty Allah, the beloved Nabi is so beloved to Allah that Allah is saying, Lawla kalama khalaqtu dunya. Oh my beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, had I not created you, had I not created you, I would have not created the world. Allahu Akbar. The beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Rabbi said that, O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, had I not created you, I would have not created the world. Such is the grand status of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That Almighty Allah granted Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the keys to, this, to his treasures and granted him the complete authority of it. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by the authority and the, and the divine will of Allah is Maliku Mukhtar. Allah Almighty gave him the power to do as he wills in this dunya. The keys to the treasures have been bestowed of this dunya, has been blessed to the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lived such a life of humility. His beloved daughter was grinding a mill until her hands were blistered. She was burning fires under a pot to cook. Her clothes were becoming soiled. But who is her father? The one whom it is being said, regarding whom it is being said, that, oh my beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, had I not created you, then I would have never created the world. This is why say the Allah Hadrat, Azimul Barakat, Imam Ahl Sunnah radiallahu anh says that Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He's saying about the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He's telling us that look what the Rabb of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying that had he not created Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he would not have created the dunya This is the shan of our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and my Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
आला हजरत हुसैन वो जो ना थे तो कुछ ना था वो जो ना थे तो कुछ ना था वो जो ना हो तो कुछ ना हो जान है वो जहान की जान है तो जहान है When he was not, there was nothing. If he is not, there will be nothing. He is the soul of the universe. If the soul exists, the universe is existing. Subhanallah. Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam is that grand king. Ustaz Zaman Shah Shah Sukhan's beautiful words. I fallen in love with these words of Ustaz Zaman radhiyallahu taala. He says, Nabi sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam is the grand king on whose head. the glowing crown of the kingship of both the worlds has been placed he has been blessed with such grand excellence that under his sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam sacred feet the throne of almighty allah has been laid the kings of the world are mendicants at his royal coat of arms famous kings are dependent on the arms on the charity which he distributes he sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam distributes the bounties of the world grants fortunes to the entire world fills the empty purses of the mendicants and grants whatever one wishes for he says he sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam is the grand and noble king whose glorious rule encompasses the east and the west whose grandness and nobility is echoing in the seven skies and throughout the earth this is nothing there is nothing of luxury in his uniquely exalted home ustaz zaman says that there is nothing of luxury in his sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam's exalted and unique home leave alone items of comfort the beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not even eat a full stomach of dry dates a full stomach and of dry dates and bread made from unsifted barley flour the beloved nabi didn't even eat that and that is why my ala hazrat adimul barakat radhiyallahu anhu says ke kul jahan milk aur jaw ki roti ghiza kul jahan milk और जौ की रोटी गजा उस शिकम की कनात पे लाखों सलाम दूनिवर्स इज हिज किंगडम एंड ब्रेड फ्रॉम बाली इज हिज न्यूट्रिशन अपॉन द कंटेंटमेंट ऑफ हिज सेक्रेट स्टमक मिलियंस ऑफ सैलिटेशन इफ वन हैज टू ऑब्जर्व हिज सल्लाम रॉयल रोब्स इफ वन हैज टू लुक एट द मुबारक लिबास ऑफ द बिलव रसूल सल्ला If one had to look at the mantle of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the jubbai mubarak of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, then they had up to 17 patches on them. How many? Today, if a little, if a little, if if if, if a little scratch on our clothes, if there's a little mark on of our clothes, if there's a slight tear on any of our clothes, if there's a thread hanging from our clothes, we become upset and we're not prepared to wear it. Here is the Nabi of Allah. and the imam ul anbiya sallallahu alaihi wasallam that there are up to 17 patches on his mubarak jubba sharif on his mubarak robes and that too not from the same fabric allahu akbar that too 17 patches on his mubarak jubba mubarak but that too not from same fabric from different kinds of fabric for two months at a time no smoke would rise from the royal kitchen from the mubarak house and i'm saying royal kitchen because it is the mubarak house of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and there is no place more kingly than the mubarak house of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam for up to two months at a time no smoke rose from the royal house of rasulullah pak sallallahu alaihi wasallam from the mubarak kitchen of rasulullah pak sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is the condition of the worldly pleasures and luxuries in the home of the beloved rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and on the other hand if one observes the dini beauty and elegance that the humility and simplicity of simplicity of that king and that master who has a humble mantle is echoing in the world if one observes the dini beauty after looking at the humility and he looks at the dini beauty and the elegance then the humility and the simplicity of that king and that master sallallahu sal- 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 alaihi wasallam who has a humble robe is echoing in both the worlds and how does it echo ala hazrat adimul barakat radhiyallahu anhu explains this in a poetic way he says malik e kaunain hai ko paas kuch rakhte nahi malik e kaunain hai ko paas kuch rakhte nahi do jahan ki ni'matein hain unki khali haath mein malik e kaunain hai ko paas kuch rakhte nahi do jahan ki ni'matein hain unki khali haath mein the king of both the worlds he is who keeps nothing for himself allah akbar the king of both the worlds he is who keeps nothing for himself but the abundance of both the worlds are indeed present in his empty hands but the abundances of both the worlds are indeed present in his empty hands 
دو جہاں کی نعمتیں ہیں ان کی خالی ہاتھ میں ون امپورٹنٹ پوائنٹ مس بی نوٹڈ ہیئر دیٹ نبی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم انڈیور دس ہارڈشپس اینڈ ڈیفیکلٹیز بائی ہیز اون پلیشر اینڈ ہیز اون ہیپینس دا بلوڈ نبی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم واز نیور کمپیلڈ ٹو لیو اے ڈیفیکلٹ لائف اف دا نبی ولڈ دین ہی ووڈ ہیو ہیڈ دا موسٹ کمفرٹیبل اینڈ دا موسٹ لگزریئس لائف اینڈ فاطمہ زہرا ووڈ ناٹ ہیو ہیڈ ٹو رن اے میل بائی ہر ہینڈ شی ووڈ ہیو ناٹ ہیڈ ٹو گو اینڈ برن فائرز اینڈ دا پاٹ شی ووڈ ہیو ناٹ ہیڈ ٹو کور کیری اے لیدن بیگ آف آف واٹر آن ہر شولڈرز شی ووڈ ناٹ ہیو ہیڈ ٹو برنگ اپ ہر چلڈرن ان سچ ڈیفیکلٹ سرکمسٹینسز اف دا بلوڈ نبی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم وشڈ فور ایٹ دے ووڈ ہیو لیو دا موسٹ کمفرٹیبل اینڈ لگزریئس لائف بٹ نبی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم واز ناٹ کمفرٹیبل ود دیٹ اینڈ ہی وشڈ فار اے لائف آف سمپلسٹی اینڈ ہیومیلٹی Think about it. Think about this for a moment. Look at our lives and see how comfortable we are. Look at how many comforts we have. Look at how much of luxuries we have. But do we make shukar in the court of Allah? Do we make shukar? How many times a day do we make shukar? How many of us perform our five daily salah and are grateful in the court of Allah? How many of us do our faraid? How many of us this morning woke up for Salatul Fajr? How many of us today played Salatul Zuhr or Salatul Asr and Salatul Maghrib and played Salatul Isha? Or we'll pray these salahs if it has not come in our time in, in the countries where we are at the moment. Think about it. We have everything, but we are still not grateful for what we have. And look at the life of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at the life of Sayyidatuna Fatima Zahra radiallahu anha. Huh? Ustaz Zaman radiallahu anha says something more beautifully. He says once, the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is creator almighty Allah. who indeed loves him more than all and who wills the best for him and who wills his pleasure sent a divine revelation and message to the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that O Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam O Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam if you wish then I will turn both the mountains of Makkah which are known these two Mubarak mountains these two mountains of Makkah are known as Akshabain the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is being told from the court of Allah If you wish, then I will turn both the mountains of Makkah to gold and they will remain with you. In other words, they'll follow you wherever you go. Mountains of gold to follow the Nabi wherever he would go. The beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I wish, O oh Allah, that you grant me one day in which I may make shukar. In other words, I may show gratitude. And you keep me hungry for one day so that I may be patient. Allahu Akbar. This hadith is in Sunnah Tirmizi, the gist of which I presented. Look at this example of our beloved Nabi. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Almighty Allah is telling him that I will turn these mountains into gold. They will follow you wherever you go. They will be at your side all the time. The beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam does not want the mountains of gold. He wants to attain the pleasure of his Rabb Almighty Allah. And there is none who has attained the pleasure of Allah more than the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is the humility of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the point that I am trying to make here is that this is the kind of home and environment in which Imam Hassan and Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala grew up. We have to understand that verily Almighty Allah blessed our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the spirit of contentment. If the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were to live in the pleasures and the luxuries of this world and if he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam preferred comfort and luxury then his creator who is pleased with the pleasure of his most beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would have sent down the heavens unto the earth. And even if this were to happen, it would have never made any difference to the pure and the noble spirit of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In such a condition, you tell me to prefer calamities and to gladly endure hardships could only mean one thing and could only be based on one thing. That being that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to this world as rahmatul lil alameen. He came to this world as rahmatul lil alameen, as mercy unto the worlds. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came as mercy unto, the, unto everything in the world. And the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were to be absorbed in the luxuries and the pleasures of the world, then due to the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even his followers would have not faced any difficulties and challenges and hardships. And in the hereafter, they would have been deprived of the blessings and rewards for enduring these difficulties and the hardships. And hence, the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not live a life of luxury and comfort. Thinking about us, that even if we face some hardships in our life, then we will be rewarded for this in the after, the hereafter. Why? Because this world is perishing. The reality is what is in the hereafter. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Through the path, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa Nabiya wa Alaihi Muhammad wa ala Ali Sayyidina wa Alaihi Muhammad wa Ashabihi wa Barik wa Sallim wa Sallu Alayhi. Once the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we know the famous, very, very famous narration. That once the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was distributing 
slave girls in that zamana there was it was it was the era of when where they, where they were handmaids and slavery and in that time after the battles when they would be captured the beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam was distributing slave girls servants amongst the muslims maula ali radhiyallahu anhu said to hazrat batul zahra radhiyallahu anhu you to go and bring a servant for yourself you to go and bring a servant for yourself she presented herself in the court of the beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam and she showed the beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam her hands and said kindly grant me a servant as well for my hands have become blistered due to running the mill excessively allah akbar the beloved rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam is listening to his daughter he is listening to the words of his beloved fatima and he is looking at her mubarak hands but what does the beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam do nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to her oh fatima i will give you something which will be more beneficial to you than a servant or a slave at night when you are about to sleep recite 33 times subhanallah 33 times alhamdulillah and 34 times allahu akbar and then go to bed subhanallah this gift which the beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam granted to sayyidatuna fatima zahra radhiyallahu anha when she asked for a servant is a unique and mubarak gift that is today even known as tasbih fatima and i say to people if you are having difficulties and everybody complains today they say that we sleep the entire night and when we wake up in the morning we don't know why we still wake up so tired i say to them pray tasbih fatima on your bed before you go to bed pray tasbih fatima on your bed before you go to sleep and you will see that inshallah you will wake up fresh in the morning no matter how less and how little you had slept because spend some time in the ibadah of allah at night don't sleep the entire night without remembering your creator and don't sleep without performing your salat or isha when you go to bed at night do this pray tasbih fatima it is the gift that the beloved rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave to his mubarak daughter so this alone will show you how the beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam trained his mubarak family he didn't give them all these luxuries like we do today unfortunately we have become spoiled our children have become spoiled but look at the house of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam why was he doing this he was doing this to teach them sabr he was doing this to teach them not to look down on others he was teaching them and nurturing them how to care for the muslim ummah once the beloved rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam let me tell you once the beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam it is mentioned visit the blessed home of hazrat fatima zahra he went to the home of bibi fatima zahra radhiyallahu anha and the beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam had only reached the door when he noticed a silver bangle on each hand of hazrat fatima radhiyallahu anha what she was wearing a bangle what's wrong with it nothing but when the beloved rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam visited the home and he had just reached the door he found that she had a bangle in each hand silver the beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam went back he didn't enter her house he went back he did not enter that day the house of bibi fatima hazrat fatima zahra radhiyallahu anha went in the court of nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam immediately and presented those two bangles so that they may be given as charity it was then given to the needy and a pair of bangles were made from the tusks of elephants or from the tusk of animals a form of some some kind of ivory it is just stated that it was made from 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 tusk which was not regarded very valuable in that time it was the simple material it was made for her two bangles or pair of bangles were made for her from those simple tusks and it was given to the beloved it was given to say that to fatima zahra radhiyallahu and it was said oh fatima the world is not suitable for muhammad and the noble family of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam think about it this was the simplicity of the home of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam this was the humility of the home of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam we know the famous waqia that umar faruq radhiyallahu an arrives at the home at the, and, and uh, went to the court of the beloved rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he saw the beloved rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam was resting on a mat made from date palms from date palms and he noticed that the tender and the delicate and the blessed jism athar of nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam was covered with marks from the mat on seeing this hazrat umar faruq radhiyallahu an began to weep umar faruq radhiyallahu an began to weep uncontrollably and he said ya rasul allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam caesar and cosros are the enemies of allah and they are living in the lap of luxury and richness and the beloved of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is living in this discomfort and hardship the beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam looked at sayyidina umar faruq radhiyallahu anhu and he said are you not pleased with this that they should receive the pleasures of the world 
the comforts of the world and you will be fortunate to have the goodness of the hereafter. Subhanallah. On one hand, look at the love which Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu has for Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his concern for the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the aqidah of Hazrat Umar Farooq radiallahu that is being clearly, is being shown very clearly here that he indeed regards the beloved Nabi as the greatest king of all the kings in the world. This is the love which the companions of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had for him. And indeed, these blessed companions manifested this love which they had for Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon the noble family of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Be it Siddiqui Akbar, be it Farooq Adam, be it Osman Ghani, or be it Ali Shair Khuda radiallahu ta'ala anhum. All of them loved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And each was blessed with a special position in the court of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Imam Hassan and Hussain radiallahu anhum carefully, my beloved brothers in Islam, Imam Hassan and Hussain carefully observed these khalafa of the blessed Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as they, of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as they grew and they indeed admired the other, they admired the humility in the court of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and each companion knew that these two flowers of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which gives, would give such sacrifices for the deen of Allah that the east and the west would glow with their blessed names and their rays would reach the corners of the world and this is why Hadrat Allama Sufi Jamil Al-Qadri radiallahu anhu said beautifully and I'm going to end today with that there's a lot more to discuss on this topic but I'm going to end due to time constraints I'm going to end today with these words of Hazrat Sufi Jamil Al-Qadri radiallahu anhu when he says Siddiq hai jaan sadaqat ki Siddiq hai jaan sadaq jaan sadaqat ki Farooq hai shaan adalat ki Siddiq hai jaan sadaqat ki Farooq hai jaan adalat ki Usman hai kaan murawwat ki Usman hai kaan murawwat ki Haider ki vilayat kya kehna Siddiq hai jaan sadaqat ki Farooq hai shaan adalat ki Usman hai kaan murawwat ki Haider ki vilayat kya kehna Hadrat Siddiq is indeed the soul of truth and honesty Hadrat Farooq is the honor of justice and integrity Hadrat Usman is the mind of nobility and dignity so splendid was the sainthood of Hadrat Haider Ali the pool and who learned from the all of them who saw their lives the pool batuli gulshan ke ek sabz hue ek surkh hue the pool batuli gulshan ke ek sabz hue ek surkh hue baghdad aur arab jinse mahke un phoolon ki nakhat kya kehna two two flowers from the garden of batul blossom beautifully beautifully two flowers from the garden of batul blossom beautifully one blossomed in green while the other blossomed in red purely do pool do pool batuli gulshan ke ek sabz hue ek surkh hue baghdad aur arab jinse mahke un phoolon ki nakhat kya kehna may allah subhanahu wa taala bless us with true love for the Ahl Bayt and the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah instill in our hearts the love for Hasnain Karimain radiallahu anhumah. May Allah allow our mothers and our sisters and our daughters to live their lives by learning from the life of Sayyidatuna Fatima Zahra radiallahu ta'ala an. May Almighty Allah grant Shifa Ikram and Sayyidat Ajil to all those that are in the Ahl Sunnah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exhort all those who have passed away from this world with an exalted place.